Right. So, today let us look at uh, some of the consequences of the Boltzmann equation vis a vis relaxation. Uh, one of the things that the primary points to be emphasized with regard to the Boltzmann equation is that it gives you an evolution equation for the phase space density in mu space for systems which are not necessarily in equilibrium, in general out of equilibrium. And then the question arises as to how the system could relax to equilibrium under suitable conditions. For instance, if you switched off the external force, how it would eventually go to the Maxwellian distribution of velocities and the distribution in space would be uniform if you did not have any external potential acting on the system. So the question is how does this relaxation proceed and this equation should presumably give you an exact answer. So let us look at such phenomena, let us call it uh, relaxation. to equilibrium from the, the Boltzmann equation. But of course, uh, the full Boltzmann equation is too difficult to solve. Even if you linearize it, it is still too difficult to solve. You need a systematic approximation procedure for uh, in powers of some correction to the distribution from the equilibrium distribution and that is a long winded story. So the question is uh, can we make a quick crude approximation and get some zeroth order idea of how relaxation occurs in various situations. So this is what we are going to do today, talk about different situations where you have relaxation to equilibrium in a very simple, particularly simple mechanism. Uh, the first of these, now before I do that, let us write the Boltzmann equation down just for you uh, to refresh your memory. So it is delta F over delta T and that is in general a function of R, V and T plus V dot del with respect to R of F plus if there is an external force, it is F over M dot gradient with respect to V of F and that is equal to the collision integral delta F over delta T collision. So all the physics is contained here. This is basically kinematics but this is where all the physics is. Okay. Now of course we know that it is not, it is horribly complicated but even after you make a linear approximation it is still as I said very messy. So let us make the simplest possible approximation. Okay. We have seen already that if you switched off the external force, there is no force at all, then this uh, thing here tends to an equilibrium distribution which is F, do not remember the notation, I called it F naught but let me call it F equilibrium, F, F equilibrium of V. was equal to, well recall our, first we should write our normalization down. The normalization of this F was integral D3 R, integral D3 V, F of V T equal to N, the total number of particles in the system. Okay. If you integrate it over V alone, so if you integrate D3 V, F of R how should I write this R V T V alone. Then you get a function of R and T which is equal to, well it is the number but it changes with the number density but it changes as a function of position and time. So this is by definition equal to N of R and T, right. If you integrate it over R alone D3 V F of R have I, sorry, what have I done? Uh, over R, R, V, T. How did I write the normalization down? 
did I mess up the normalization? Uh, so this is okay as it stands, but how did I get the number density? Oh yes, so we wrote integral d3 v f equilibrium of v was equal to n over v equal to n. That is the norm. Right. Thank you. So let me de define this non-uniform density by just integrating over the velocity alone, this uh, distribution function. And in equilibrium, there is no t dependence, there is no r dependence. If I integrate over d3v, I should get n over v, okay. So that is, th those are the normalizations. Now, what we would like to say is that, remember, remember that f, I need a little more notation, f equilibrium of v was equal to n, this thing here, in space for the spatial part and then the, the velocity part was the Maxwellian distribution. So the normalized distribution was m over 2 pi k Boltzmann t to the 3 halves e to the minus m v squared over 2 k Boltzmann t. So that is the equilibrium distribution. This is a constant. Now, this function is going to keep appearing all the time, the Maxwellian distribution in the velocity alone, okay. So let us give it a name, let us call this equal to, is identically equal to n times, let us call this W of V to show that this is the Maxwellian distribution. Because in equilibrium, everything is in the absence of an external force, the distribution in space is uniform. So we have a uniform density, number density n per unit volume and then multiplied by a velocity distribution which is the Maxwellian distribution. And this is normalized to unity. So we know that integral d3v w of v equal to 1. That is the reason for this factor 2 pi kt whatever it is. Three halves. Right. Now, what the approximation does, this, the simplest approximation to the right hand side is to say that collisions cause, if you have a small departure from equilibrium, collisions cause you to go towards equilibrium. They help you to equilibrate. So if your distribution f of r v comma t is a little bit away from f equilibrium, then if you make the single relaxation time approximation, the so-called single relaxation time approximation, so let us write that down, single then if you start with the uniform density, the system is completely in equilibrium. And you ask, if I had this perturb it a little bit away from equilibrium, the velocities are not thermalized, they are a little bit away from equilibrium, how would these velocities equilibrate? Is the question, right? Are you doing the zero force case? Yes, zero force case. I will do the thing system with the force present, but zero force case. So that is the reason. Whenever this happens, Whenever this is a function of r, you know that there is probably a force present. Hmm? But even in the absence of a force, instantaneously there could be density fluctuations and there are. So in general, I would call this n of r and t, r comma t. But when you have reached equilibrium in space and time, uh, I mean in velocity and position, then the whole thing is just a constant here. Okay. okay. Now, how does the velocity relax? That is the first question we want to ask. So let us call uh, 1. Within that single relaxation time approximation, relaxation of the velocity that is given by the following. Now there is no space dependence because 
it is uniform throughout and the velocity is supposed to relax to equilibrium. Now we already know there is a model for this. This was the Langevin model when I wrote down the Langevin equation and then I argued that if there is white noise which causes collisions and so on, uh, the effect of collisions is mimicked by white noise, Gaussian white noise, etc. Then you got a Fokker-Planck equation and the solution to that was the onstein ohlenbeck distribution. And then that constant gamma, the friction constant determined how things relax to equilibrium and the velocity correlation time was an exponential, single decaying exponential with the relaxation time gamma inverse. That was that model, okay. But now we do not have that model at all. There is no stochastic force or anything like that. This is a completely self-consistent system and we are not saying that the mass of this particle is different from the masses of the rest of it. We are not saying that at all. No such assumption. Okay. But we made a huge approximation to this in this single relaxation time approximation. So now this F is going to satisfy delta F of Vt over delta T, no external force. The distribution is uniform in space, so this term is missing and you only have this and this is equal to the collision integral and what the single relaxation time approximation says is that this is equal to there is a relaxation time brought in a parameter tau, just one of them, so it is minus 1 over tau and inside is just f of Vt minus f equilibrium of Vt. So that is the approximation. It replaces by saying the deviation at any instant of time of the velocity distribution from the Maxwellian distribution is negligible, is very, very small and then what you have is exactly like in radioactive decay, which is very similar to that, this difference divided by tau and it has got the right dimensions. It is the dimensionality of delta F over delta T except this F is discretized and said that it is the difference between the distribution, instantaneous distribution and the equilibrium one divided by the time scale tau. Okay. So this is an extremely simple model. Okay. Now what does it predict? Now we can solve this. This is a trivial equation to solve. It is a first order equation. So it is trivial to solve and of course what one should do is to write set, well we can either write down the integrating factor or else set f of vt equal to e to the minus t over tau. Obviously going to relax with that characteristic time scale tau multiplied by something else. So let me call this psi of V comma T. Okay. Then the equation on the left hand side is the first term is minus 1 over tau times this whole business which will cancel against that on the right hand side and it says e to the minus T over tau delta psi over delta T equal to the first term cancels, so it is equal to 1 over tau F equilibrium of V. Moving this to the right hand side times E to the T over tau. Well, but you have to tell me what the initial condition is. You have to tell me what is the initial velocity distribution. So let us put that in. So initial condition f of vt equal to some initial distribution, some prescribed is the initial distribution. So that immediately implies that uh, psi implies psi of V0 is F initial of V. Because this term becomes 1 at t equal to 0 trivially. Okay. So what is the solution to this thing? It says psi of Vt minus F initial of V 
practice solving this differential equation, uh, you have to integrate this from 0 to t, put t prime and integrate 0 to t. So that integral becomes the t ca tau cancels as you can see, so it becomes e to the t over tau minus 1 times f equilibrium of V. which implies that uh, f of v t equal to, I move this to the right hand side and multiply this by e to the minus t over tau, so it gives me e to the minus t over tau f initial of t plus I multiply this by e to the minus t over tau, so this is 1 minus e to the minus t over tau f equilibrium of t. That is the solution, which is exactly what you would expect. At t equal to 0, this thing is equal to the initial value because that vanishes and as t tends to infinity, this term goes away, that term goes away and you are hitting the f equilibrium. Exactly. So this will work as long as this is very close to equilibrium. So that is the whole point that you replace this entire collision integral by saying that the system is very close to Maxwellian distribution. What is initial integral? Pardon me? Whatever you prescribe. There is no reason why that should be Maxwellian. For consistency of the approximation, this too should be fairly close to the Maxwellian distribution, of course. No, that is not the point. There is a characteristic time scale tau. We do not know anything about it. We have simply said this entire collision integral has been replaced by this discretized version. Okay. We have not had, do not have any handle here about what this tau is at all. Okay. What we need to do is to find some way of finding out how good this approximation is, is to find some way of measuring this tau if it exists. Now in practice that is not going to happen. But you can see what is go, what we can do, what we should, let me indicate how one should go about it in the general problem. Huh? In the general case, we are looking at a function of V, this quantity is a function of V and T. Huh? Now we know that the equilibrium distribution is a Maxwellian, is this fellow here, okay. Now any arbitrary function of V where we run, each component of V runs minus V infinity to infinity can be expanded as Gaussian, a Gaussian in V times Hermite polynomials. So in principle, you can say this quantity here is a superposition of all the Hermite polynomials times the Maxwellian distribution with coefficients which are possibly time dependent, which are certainly time dependent and that is how the equilibrium will happen. Now this is the crudest approximation to that. It says that in some sense it just says the polynomial you are talking about is 1, okay. You have taken the constant, there is no Hermit polynomials anywhere, there is no function of V anywhere. You just have this function of V and that is it. This is already the Maxwellian, okay. So there is a systematic way of justifying, I mean finding out what this approximation means. But in physical terms it says that if you replace this entire collision integral by saying that we do not care what is happening in the inner mechanism, there is some effective time tau over which the system equilibrates, then this is what happened as far as the algebra is concerned. But now how far this is good, how good, uh, good an approximation this is, can we get a handle on tau, can we measure it and so on are not answered questions within this framework as yet. Yeah. We are going to find out. We are going to find out if this tau appears anywhere else and then discover how, ask how the, how, what tau could possibly be, okay. Certainly, yeah. It will not be a single molecular collision time because there are many, many time scales involved here. So this is some effective time scale on which the velocity is thermalized. Okay. We already know from the Langevin model that the time scale on which the velocity thermalizes 
in that model seems to have something to do with the viscosity of the medium. But that was dependent on the assumption that the Langevin equation was valid, which is itself true only if the mass of that particle is much, much higher. That is not obvious here. It is not obvious here. So it is clear there is a spectrum of relaxation times and you have taken the leading contribution. That is really what has happened. Hmm? Now the question is, can this also, could this result have been produced in any other argument, any other way? Is there a simpler model which would produce exactly the same result? some stochastic model which will produce the same result. It is clear this is not the onstein uhlenbeck distribution at all. So it is not certainly the Langevin model at all. It is very different from that. The Langevin model has this onstein uhlenbeck distribution which is again a Gaussian where the system tends to the Maxwellian distribution exponentially with this time scale gamma inverse but it is very different looking from this. Here it is just a either the, this is V, sorry. And incidentally, this, if I start with the particle like we did in the Langevin model with a given velocity V0, this of course would be delta of V minus V0. This would be replaced by a delta function here. But I am allowing a little more general solution by saying that it could be a distribution in itself, not all fixed at one velocity. Okay. Is there some way of producing this thing here by a simple model assumption on the random, on the nature of the random velocity v. Can we do this at all? Uh, not the Langevin model here. Now, the answer is yes, but it must be a much simpler model than the Langevin equation because that involved the Fokker-Planck equation which we solved. This thing here looks like it is a much more trivial thing to solve, right. There is an equation for the distribution function which is first order in time and involves the same thing out here. So it just looks like a Markov process. We have just assumed it to be a Markov process, but it looks like it is a discrete Markov process. Well, it is continuous because V is continuous, but it looks like V is changing through a jump process of some kind. Hmm? So let us see if that is validated or not. Suppose V underwent, suppose V is given by a Markov process. Suppose, so what I am trying to do is to argue that there is an effective model where V is just taken to be a Markov process by which you will reproduce this exact result. So that is another way of understanding what is the meaning of this single relaxation time approximation. Suppose V is a Markov process. Collisions will take V to some other value. Each component of V varies continuously minus infinity to infinity. The moment you say it is a Markov process, then its probability density, hmm, delta, I need to use another symbol for it. Since I am reserving F for the symbol we use in the Boltzmann equation, the distribution in, in new space, let us just call it P. Okay. So delta P of V and T divided by delta T must be equal to on the right hand side we need to write a rate equation because it is a Markov process. So in general you can write this since it is a continuous process D3 V prime on this side times a gain term and a loss term. That is what you do for any Markov process for which you can define a transition probability per unit time, right. So times the probability that you have reached the velocity v prime at time t multiplied by the transition rate per unit time that you hit v given v prime starting from v prime. So this guy here is the v prime to v That is the gain term and the loss term in the rate equation is minus W. You jump out to V that is the Markovian master equation. 
Now the question is can I produce this solution by writing a model for W, okay. That is the question being asked. Detailed balance must obtain in equilibrium. So what sort of function should I put in here such that in equilibrium, this will become P equilibrium that becomes P equilibrium. What sort of function should I put in here such that detail balance will obtain here, hmm. Well, let us look at the physical process. You have an initial velocity V in this, in this uh, transition rate, you have a velocity V and it is getting knocked out into any other velocity V prime. Now what is the effect of these collisions? One uh, possible approximation is to say the collisions are extremely weak. So whatever you started with, that changes very slightly in a given collision. In the limit of no collisions, it will not change at all. But in the limit of weak collisions, it will change very small by a very small amount delta v. If you start with v, a collision will connect you only to those velocities which are within a range delta v of the initial v. That is the weak collision approximation and it turns out that approximation leads to the Fokker-Planck equation, okay. Assuming that there is no memory in these collisions and it is a Markov process. I am not going to do that but there is a way of systematically deriving from this master equation, the Fokker-Planck equation by making the so-called weak collision approximation. There is another possibility and that is a very strong collision approximation. It says look, each collision is such that it thermalizes it at once, okay. In other words, it says that this quantity lambda v, v prime, the transition rate from any velocity v prime to any other velocity v does not depend on the initial value at all. The collisions are so strong that in, in a given collision, it is immediately thermalized, okay. That is one possibility that the transition rate is independent of the initial state. It depends only on the final state. So suppose that were true, suppose were equal to, we need this is a transition rate. So you need a constant of dimensions time inverse, let us call it lambda times some function, let me, I should not use the function psi, I should go to use some other function. What is a good, what is a good uh, psi of V, independent of V prime, suppose. So the transition rate every time there is a collision and the average rate of collisions is lambda, mm -hmm. the velocity changes. Whatever be the initial velocity, it goes to a final velocity v. Depends only on the final velocity v, okay. Suppose this is true mm -hmm. and now you impose detail balance in equilibrium, then what will it imply? This will imply detail balance implies then with this assumption, with this assumption, if you let t tend to infinity, this term is 0, the time derivative, it goes to equilibrium. This becomes P equilibrium of V prime and this becomes lambda times xi of only the final state of V, P equilibrium of V prime must be equal to lambda times xi of V prime, P equilibrium of V. And there is only one solution to that, which is that this is P equilibrium of V itself. So it is obviously the strong collision approximation. So okay. in one shot, yeah. 
So what it's saying is the following. You have an equilibrium distribution. In every collision, the velocity is reset from whatever its value to some value drawn from the equilibrium distribution with those probabilities. So if your distribution is a Gaussian and you are at this point, you have this initial velocity. After collision, the velocity, new velocity is reset to be one of these velocities with this distribution, with this probability it is chosen, okay. So that is the implication of this statement here. A random process in which uh, a Markovian process, continuous mark, uh, a process in which the transition rate is independent of the initial state and is drawn from the final state alone and is a function of the final state alone, value alone and moreover there is detailed balance. This is called a Kubo-Anderson process. Okay. So what we have shown so far is that if you assume a Markov process for this guy and a Kubo-Anderson process with detailed balance, then this equation simplifies enormously and look at what happens to it. Then we write uh, equilibrium and S equilibrium equation. Exactly. Yeah. Apart from that factor yeah. N. There is that factor n for our phase space distribution. This is only in the velocity, so I have distinguished it by writing p equilibrium separately. So look at what happens to this equation. You have d3 v prime. This is a function xi of v, p equilibrium of v. And then you have d3 v prime p of v prime t, which is equal to 1 because it has got to be normalized. So this immediately says delta p vt over delta t equal to lambda times this fellow here is p equilibrium of v on this side minus lambda times and now this is an integral d3 v prime of p equilibrium of V prime which is 1 on this side times P of V and T. So it is clear that with the identification lambda equal to 1 over tau you get the single uh, relaxation time approximation. It is exactly the same. So the solution is exactly the same. So one way of interpreting the single relaxation time approximation in the weak uh, in the in the Boltzmann equation with the linearized Boltzmann equation is to say it is equivalent to saying that the velocity v is just a Markov process, a Kubo-Anderson process, nothing more than that, okay. This gives exactly the same solution as you can see. Now you can ask, well, can I tweak this a little bit? Can I uh, try to improve this model by saying, look, each collision need not take you to the uh, velocity drawn from the equilibrium distribution. Uh, so there could be one limit in which you have a very weak effect of collisions, another, this is a strong collision limit in which it immediately thermalizes in some sense, okay. So is there anything in between? I leave it as an exercise to you to show the following, this is a rather simple exercise that if you say independent of this, independent of this, if you say that this W is not this but it is equal to lambda times, let us say some gamma times, no, I should, gamma is a bad number, alpha times, well, alpha times uh, a function of a xi of, this is P equilibrium, so let me write it like that, P equilibrium of V plus 1 minus alpha times a delta 
of v minus v prime. You could do that, right. This interpolates. When alpha is 1, you have the Kubo Anderson process. When alpha is 0, this goes away and you have no collision at all. It does not do anything. No? This will not equilibrate at all. It will remain where it is. But this here with alpha equal to 1 equilibrates with the time constant lambda inverse, okay. So now figure out what happens. You, you can easily satisfy yourself that this again satisfies the detail balance condition. So it is a kind of interpolation model between the strong collision limit and the 0 no collision limit in between where alpha is any number between 0 and 1, okay. Ah, it does not equal, if that depends on lambda, this depends on lambda, right. So, it's not, it does not equilibrate in one collision. It simply says that the transition rate is drawn from the equilibrium distribution independent of where you started with. Yes, you can, but this is an arbitrary parameter. This is an arbitrary, yes, there are models for collision broadening in gases and so on where you use a strong collision limit seems to be the correct limit to work with. Yes, there are physical systems which display this behavior. No? So the point I am trying to make is if you did not have this, you have the strong collision limit, it is a rather trivial solution. It is equivalent to the single relaxation time approximation in the Boltzmann equation, in the linearized Boltzmann equation. On the other hand, if you did not have this, but you had this alone, there is no collision, there is no physics, it is no equilibration at all. But if you tweak this and made this a weak collision limit, then you get the Fokker-Planck equation, okay. So it is possible to derive the Fokker-Planck equation from the Boltzmann equation by making a single relaxation time approximation and a weak collision approximation. I am not going to do that. That is a little bit of machinery, but I am not going to do that. I just wanted to point this out, okay. But now you could choose this alpha to be between 0 and 1. What do you think will happen? This model also satisfies the detail balance condition for any alpha between 0 and 1. Okay. So what do you think will happen to the solutions? Again, it should be solvable completely because there is a delta function here. All it does is to rescale time, it does not, it just buys you some time, it does not do anything, okay. The second term does not do very much, it, uh, yeah, not entirely, but this one here remains, so, okay. So it just changes to lambda alpha and then because it is lambda alpha inverse, as you can see, if alpha was 0, there would be collisions do not change the velocity at all, so there would be no equilibration which is equivalent to saying the relaxation time must become infinite. So it is not surprising that it appears here in this place, okay. So the reason, purpose of introducing this was to show you that uh, relaxation phenomena can be modeled from the, uh, in a systematic way from the Boltzmann equation, okay. Now let us look at the other thing we did with the Langevin model. Which Uh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. It is not the collision time, very emphatically no. It is not the collision, time between collisions, no, emphatically no. Okay. In fact, we will see what this uh, tau is in the single collision approximation, okay. This was just a model. The lambda was completely arbitrary here. But let us go back to the single collision thing and look at the other phenomenon which was we have a gas in which you have a non-uniform initial distribution. The velocity has thermalized and now the system diffuses. That was our famous diffusion regime where the mean square displacement went like linearly with time and the velocity correlation time had long died down and you are looking at longer time scales. Uh, Let us see how that comes out in this language, in the Boltzmann equation. So this is the 
smoothing out of a non-uniform initial distribution. In other words, diffusion, self-diffusion this time because the particles of the medium are themselves diffusing. No external force as before and the Boltzmann equation is delta F over delta T plus V dot gradient with respect to R of F. This term is very much present because this is a function of R, B and T. That's equal to the single relaxation time approximation, and what would you write it as this time? It's one over tau f of r v and t minus. What would you write it this time as? There's an r distribution. There's definitely an r distribution, right? We are trying to, okay, but the velocity has thermalized. So you write it as n of r comma t times w of e. And recall that this fellow here is integral d three v f of r v t by definition. non-uniform distribution, the velocity has thermalized, it is the max value. We want to know how this guy relaxes. How would you solve an equation like this? Well, it has got both space and time derivatives. So clearly, you are going to do Laplace transform with respect to the time derivative, time and Fourier transform with respect to space. Right? So you are going to define an F tilde of K V and S to be integral 0 to infinity dt e to the minus st integral d3 r e to the minus i k dot r F of r V I do not want to put 2 tildes, I mean it stands for, okay, this stands for Fourier transform with respect to R, Laplace transform with respect to time of this. We plug that in here at this point. Okay. And then let us write the equation down directly. Oh, by the way, I need to tell you what is the initial value of this fellow here. What is the initial uh, distribution? Mm -hmm. So I have to tell you what the initial distribution is. So let us put n uh, f of r v 0 is equal to okay, n initial of r, whatever be that initial non-uniform distribution that you have plugged in times w of v of course. So what is the equation you get this? Let us call this F tilde when I do the Fourier Laplace transform. So F tilde uh, S times F tilde of K V S minus this guy here. That is the formula for the Laplace transform of the time derivative. But I got to do a Fourier transform with respect to space. Let us call that n tilde of initial of k. Hmm. 
w of v just sits there as a spectator this plus v dot gradient what is this guy going to do gradient with respect to r pulls down and minus i k. Huh? So, we got minus i k dot v times f tilde of k v and s here this guy here that is the transform of this fellow here okay. This is equal to on the right hand side equal to 1 over tau minus 1 over tau f tilde of k v and s it should be plus. So, I expand this in terms of I expand this fellow yeah I expand this fellow and then it is f tilde etcetera. I, I leave it to you to put in all the 2 pi factors and stuff like that okay yeah yeah. When I go to the Fourier transform in every one of these terms there is a 1 over 2 pi in the inverse transform that cancels out but this is a plus because what I am doing is to write this fellow in terms of as 1 over 2 pi d 3 k this guy e to the plus i k dot r. So, plus i k dot v is equal to this, this term plus 1 over tau the Fourier transform of this fellow plus 1 over tau n tilde of k and s w of v. Now, this looks like a hopeless task because <laughs> we do not know what this is and we do not know what this is. What should I do? What should I do? This is presumably given to me. This is known function here. Huh? I integrate both sides with respect to v. What happens then? So, what happens to integral d 3 notice that integral d 3 v f of r v t integrated over v is n of r t. If I take Laplace transform this becomes n of r s. If I do Fourier transform it becomes n tilde of k comma s. So, I integrate both sides with respect to v in which case you are going to get this thing here and this is going to be integrated over with respect to v on this side, but you got to be a little careful in doing this. This n initial will move to the right hand side yeah. and there is this guy. So, we should not yet integrate over v. We need to pull various things and then do the integral over v. Now, let us write all the f guys together. So, there is s that is this term plus i k dot v plus i k dot v. So, this term is gone, this term is gone plus 1 over tau plus 1 over tau times f tilde of k v and s is equal to so, this term is gone. One I have written seem to have written one extra term. I seem to have an extra term somewhere. This is equal to well, let us see where this takes us n initial tilde of k times w of v that is certainly there uh, plus the last term plus 1 over tau oh, where is the problem? No, no, no. What did I do? How did was this quite right? How did this come about? This is equal to this is f of r v 
it is f tilde of k v and 0, is not it? Yes. This term is f tilde of k v and 0 and which we wrote as uh, the initial distribution in R times the equilibrium distribution in V and then the Fourier transform with respect to that which was this guy. So this is okay, this is okay plus n tilde of, yeah so that part is all right, 1 over tau n tilde, yes of k and s w of e. So this is gone, that is the equation, right. But now let us move this to the right hand side. So this is divided by s plus i k dot v plus 1 over tau. s plus i k dot v plus 1 over tau. I am going to leave the rest of the completion of this algebra to you. So I move this there and I integrate over v, okay. Then if I do this on both sides d3 v of this whole thing, of the entire thing both the left and right hand side. Then what is this quantity equal to? I have integrated over this. So this is n tilde of k comma s. So I get an equation which says n tilde of k s equal to the integral of w of v alone is 1 but you have got this in the denominator. So you cannot do anything with it. It is equal to n initial tilde of k integral d3 v w of v over s plus i k dot v plus 1 over tau is this fellow sitting there that is some number it depends on s and it depends on k it is some function of s and k right plus the same number once again because there is w of v over this guy 1 over tau n tilde of k comma s times the same integral d3 v w of v blah blah blah. Call that integral something or the other and bring it to the left hand side and you have an equation now for n tilde of k comma s. You invert with the Laplace transform, you get n tilde of k comma t. You invert the Fourier transform, you get n of r comma t in principle. Now doing it analytically is formidable, but you have a closed equation for it completely. And what we will do next time is to take this and see how we are going to get the diffusion coefficient in the so-called hydrodynamic limit. First of all, you have a relaxation time tau here. We have seen that the velocity is relaxing with the relaxation time tau. We know the diffusion regime is when you are at time scales much bigger than the relaxation time, right. So in terms of the Laplace variable, we need not even invert the Laplace variable. The diffusion regime would mean S times tau, this guy here would be very, very small. S is small compared to 1 over tau that corresponds to long times, small s is large t, okay. So this guy here should be equal much, much less than 1 and k should be very, very small also because you are looking at hydrodynamic modes, you are looking at long wavelength fluctuations, not on very short length scales. Long time scales, long length scales should give us then the diffusion coefficient. We will see how that emerges from here systematically. We get actually more information from this uh, equation, but the basic trick is the following. The basic trick is you write the single relaxation approximation by saying the collision integral is some 
minus 1 over tau, tau times the di difference between the distribution function and the asymptotic form or whatever and then you solve that equation in a self consistent way. In this case the trick was to integrate over V and then get a self consistent equation for n tilde of k comma s which is what we are trying to find n of r comma t and what is done is to find its Laplace and Fourier transforms first and do this. So, we will complete this, we will do this, meanwhile try this out and then we will uh, see how a systematic approximation procedure will give us the diffusion coefficient here, okay. Then there also remains the case of what happens if I apply a uniform but time dependent force on the system. How will it take it out of equilibrium? So, you start with an initial condition that is spatially uniform and the velocity is thermalized and then say I am going to switch on a force which does not depend on the position in the simplest instance but on time how is the system going to go out of equilibrium again in the single relaxation time approximation. So, we will look at that as well and those are things which these are the things which will help you to find things like the viscosity, the diffusion coefficient, the thermal conductivity and so on as I have said before okay. So, let me stop here. <laughs>